Here, let's look at some of these guys. So we got red foot tortoises, a little Greek tortoise, a leftover runt sulcata. We've got the three leopard tortoises here. These were from the snow leopard hatch. I'm gonna hold on to these guys and I'm starting over from scratch. So this should be a really fun little project. What's going on everyone? Ken in here and as you can see, I have no shortage of baby tortoises going on and it was time to get these guys out of the house and into a larger enclosure. You guys remember I was using one of these Zoomed tortoise houses, about half of them, but what you don't know is you can connect the two and make an even bigger one. So I did that and uh, while I was at it, I went ahead and I charred up this base. We nailed some two by fours to it so it could accommodate the two tortoise houses uh, in a row. And now we are building the ultimate baby tortoise habitat. Going to be on wheels i'm going to be able to move this in and out of the sun so i don't have to worry about any uvb bulbs at the moment uh, so i'm really excited about that and right now you can see that i'm just getting to using the bedding uh, so very important uh, with baby tortoises you can see right here the moisture uh, that i have on this side this is the new bedding we got the fluker coconut fiber right there and i'm going to be using the fluker reptibark here Okay, I'll probably put this whole bag in and then I'm gonna mix it together, but that's not all. I also have the Fluker Moss. This sphagnum moss, very good stuff because it's gonna help retain moisture inside this habitat. Even though it's outside, it's gonna dry up, very hot sun, so we wanna make sure that we're keeping these guys hydrated. So basically today, I'm just gonna set up this enclosure and then we're gonna watch some baby tortoises run around in it. I hope you guys enjoy it. It'll give you some ideas. You don't have to go out and purchase one of these boxes. You can actually build this fairly easy. If you were to get some pressure treated wood, you can make the sides. As you can see, I modified the tops. They've got a heavy duty wire on it, so nothing can get in since we're putting them outside. Uh, so we don't want any predators to get in at them, but we do want the UVB light to penetrate and make sure these little guys are happy and healthy. Now, as far as the tortoises we have here, let's look at some of these guys. We've got uh, a couple species in here um, I wanted to show you. So we got red foot tortoises. There's a red foot right there, fairly new little guy, still uh, hatching out. Here's another red foot. You can see just how small they are. We've also got cherry heads, and I've done this in other videos, but I'm gonna show you the difference between a cherry head and a red foot. You see the bottom of this guy's uh, shell? There's not a lot of black, but look at the, red, uh, the cherry head right there. Look at how different that shell is. Much more black uh, along that belly, along the plastron, and then there's also, if you look, I'm gonna put this guy down. If you look right here, a very pronounced, right at the tip of my finger there, it's a very pronounced elbow scale. Uh, that's another way you can tell. So we've got cherry heads, red foots, and then, you know, uh, we've got a little Greek tortoise. Okay, really happy about that. Little Greek guy. Uh, Testudo gracia gracia, the nominant species. Uh, very good. And we've got a leftover runt sulcata that I'm keeping around. I'm just gonna see how he does, cause he's a small guy. Uh, I didn't think he was doing too well, so I never sold him, but he's not growing as much, yet he eats. So that's a little runt there, but we're gonna keep on him. Uh, of course, we've got the three leopard tortoises here. These were from the snow leopard hatch. Although they are not looking up, well, look at this guys. Here's what's happening as they grow. You can see right there, a little bit of that marbling is starting to come out. So many people are freaking out because they say, oh, Ken and these snow leopards are not snow leopards, they're just regular. You have to watch them grow. As they grow, they're going to get more and more of the uh, marbling, okay? So that's what's really important. So I'm holding on to these guys. I'm actually, since I was, uh, I recently sold most of my leopards, I'm gonna hold on to these guys and I'm starting over from scratch. I have the snow leopards that are just out on that side of the green or brown shed. And then right here, we've got some of their offspring. So I'm gonna keep these guys and see how they're doing. But now I wanna talk about something that's very interesting. And over the last, gosh, few years, I have so many of them and they are all just very interesting. So let's talk about elongated tortoises. This is kind of what elongateds look like for the most part, okay? Really cute, really fun tortoise, very hardy, love high humidity, do very well in Florida, can take cooler temperatures. A very, very special tortoise, I love them. Um, but I'm starting to see, and we've noticed, 
uh, some very interesting patterns. Look at how different some of these guys look. Uh, just really, really remarkable coloration on some of their shells. Now I have people that have been buying them up because they really believe that there is something going on here with the genetics of these guys. So these three are really beautiful. Sorry, little guy. But I wanna show you what's going on. Now we get a little bit different when you look at this guy's coloration, just really bizarre. Nice, beautiful head, pale skin. Um, very, very interesting, right? Well, let's get even crazier. Look at this, so beautiful. It's just incredible, uh, the muteness of the color. And then that yellow head, there's something definitely going on with these guys, just that high variability. Look at the light colors. This one just hatched. Hey, get back over here, little guy. This guy just hatched. And then we've got another beauty right here that hatched a few months ago. How about this? I mean, have you ever seen that? I don't know. But uh, most of the elongated that hatch out do not look like that. But I've been getting a really cool, a really cool, did I lose the tortoise? Oh, no, I guess not. Uh, basically, really, really beautiful colors on these guys. Look at this. You can really see the variation of colors. Not a lot of black in most of them. Oh my God, these guys are cruising all over each other. I'm actually gonna transfer these little ones to a different tub, which I have right here. Um, and I'm gonna separate out the elongated from everyone else so that we can really see just how remarkably variable they are. And I always get these almost leucistic elongated that Man, people just buy up. They're beautiful. Let's just see. I just love the difference. This is a tortoise that not many people uh, pay attention to, but they really should because they are interesting in behavior. They have great personalities and they're also hardy. So that to me is really important uh, that the tortoise doesn't grow big, but look at this. Look at those colors. This guy was from an egg that um, a few weeks ago, you saw me pull it out of the incubator because it flies. I let it uh, finish incubating in the garage. I'm glad I didn't throw that away. And then look at this one. Just really beautiful muted colors. And then you got this real dark. That's normally right there. That's normally what they look like. This guy's different, but they normally come out a little bit darker. But for whatever reason, I get the, look at this guy's contrast. Just really beautiful. And then again, we've got the snow leopards, we've got cherry heads, we've got some uh, really special tortoises, the red foots and uh, little sulcata in Greek, so really good stuff. So I gotta get to work, you know? Lots happening here with these guys. So uh, we gotta keep it up, we gotta keep working and that's just what I'm gonna do. So see you in a minute. All right, how about it? I just got all these little guys back in there and I wanted to show you everything that I did to make this place very hospitable for these beautiful little baby tortoises and make my life easy too, because now that these guys are in a larger enclosure, uh, it's gonna be less work for me, you know? Uh, about the only thing I'm gonna wanna do is keep an eye on each one of these. There's 29 tortoises in here right now. And these little guys, I'm gonna make sure are getting fed. And you'll notice that I am housing different species in these together. Now, number one, all these guys were hatched out here in captivity. I'm not really worried about any kind of diseases. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is these tortoises, uh, for example, the elongated and the red foots and cherry heads, oh, get over there, buddy. Uh, these guys here um, are from a more human environment. That being said, guys like our little Greek tortoise that's hiding out under there has already found this piece of driftwood. Uh, he's kind of getting into a microclimate. They wanna be more humid. I'm trying to raise the leopard tortoises up in a sort of more humid environment just so that they become acclimated to the uh, giant uh, environment that's out there called South Florida. South Florida does have a wet and dry season. So these animals are basically guys gonna get that as they grow up. Uh, that being said, I do mistings here. Uh, right now I did a heavy misting just so that we get the under 
uh, moist, the undersoil moist, so these guys can burrow down into it. Even tortoises from drier climates will like a misting. It's a matter of making sure you don't always keep the soil sopping wet. We've got a water dish here, very shallow. They can get in and out of. Here comes one of the leopards right now. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna go in or avoid it? I think he's gonna avoid it. There's a cherry head right there. You'll also notice we have that Fluker sphagnum moss right there. I uh, put a flat rock here. This I'm gonna be feeding the tortoises on. It'll help wear down their beaks. This is the smooth side of this limestone here. Now, why did I put the rough side up here? I did that so this can become a basking area. The sun will heat this up, the tortoises will congregate, they'll get warm, and uh, that'll be really cool. Now, we've got the driftwood in here, they're climbing all over it, I like the exercise. That being said, gotta make sure these tortoises don't flip over because again, they are gonna be getting natural sunlight in the afternoon, so I don't want these guys to have any kind of issue. But luckily for me, I'm always around. I put some of their Spanish moss right there, uh, the Fluker Spanish moss, and I went ahead and put some more sphagnum moss right there uh, so that these guys can keep, I'm gonna keep this obviously much more moist than it's gonna stay out here. So the tortoises that like the moisture are gonna be able to go to it. The tortoises that wanna stay drier are gonna be able to do that. Uh, but Overall, really happy with this. You just connect the two tortoise houses uh, and it looks pretty good. So this should be a really fun way for me to keep uh, these guys raised up and healthy and also exercise because now the 29 tortoises that are in here will be able to move about freely. Uh, just really loving this. It was a fun little project. As you guys know, we are kind of quarantined, so there's not much we can really be doing. I uh, just wanted to show you the packaging. There's the Reptibark. We uh, used the, the uh, loose coconut fiber to mix in with that to create a nice soil. And then we also have their Spanish moss from Fluker, as well as the green moss or sp uh, sphagnum moss that I put in. But overall, really enjoying this. This was a fun little project. It was something that needed to be done. And I thought it would be a cool way to inspire you guys to do something for your baby tortoises and even your adult tortoises. If you can just scale this up a bit, then you know you've got a good habitat for the adults. Uh, very important with baby tortoises to make sure they don't get dehydrated. So I got my garden hose now. I can mist them down. I make sure that we've got water. Uh, the soil's gonna stay moist underneath it. And when we have unpleasant weather, I'm gonna be able to wheel it in and out of the uh, elements that are out there. So again, really fun stuff. Thought you guys would enjoy this. Here are all my baby animals right here. We've got uh, Leon right there, the banana pectinata looking real dark. We also have right here, the baby rhinoceros iguanas. They're doing very well. Just gave them a misting. Hey guys, these guys were born in October and are taming up nicely. Uh, if you guys are interested in any of my baby animals, just email me for a price list if you guys are interested in purchasing one of the animals here. You can see how much we love them, how much I work on them. Uh, this is so much fun, and it was the first time that I ever connected two of these tortoise houses. And uh, I want to shout out to Fluker for helping me out, keeping me in business here. These guys have been amazing, so thank you guys. If you guys are interested in any of their products, check them out. There'll be a description below uh, for their website so you can see everything that they make, and maybe they can help you make your animals' lives better. All right, everyone, that's it for me. Like and subscribe, turn notifications on, share, but most importantly, be nice to your tortoises. Look at that beauty right there. Are you serious? I love, hey, this is a strong tortoise right here. What are you doing, little one? <laughs> Get on through there. So much fun. See you guys later.